The original version of the Jackrabbit was designed to help college students get across very large campuses. This new version of the bike, the XG, includes a lot of upgrades that are designed to make it a lot more versatile. So what are the big things that stood out during our testing, and did Jackrabbit succeed? Let's take a ride and find out. Welcome back to Electric Bike Report. I'm John, and we're gonna dive into everything the XG brings to the table. But very quickly, if you're interested in picking up an e-bike for yourself, please make sure you're subscribed to the channel and you have notifications turned on. We upload new reviews a couple times every week, and we wanna make sure you find the best bike for you. So first thing is first about the XG here, it's not technically an e-bike as it does not include pedals. And in fact, Jackrabbit calls it a mini electric motorbike since it's powered completely by a throttle. We think of it as a scooter alternative because it has a lot of the same portability, but it's more stable and comfortable. And if I'm being honest, I think it looks a lot better as well. I normally introduce a bike by talking about one of its components or a specific feature that it includes, but for this one, I've got to talk about just how unique it feels to ride. It's impossible to sit on the XG without being a little silly and just having a huge amount of fun. It kind of feels like a toy in that you have no choice but to feel like a kid again, and that's not something I can say about many bikes I've tested. Part of that experience is due to the bike's size, but the other part is its 500 watt rear hub motor. The original version of the Jackrabbit used a 300 watt motor that worked totally fine, but we noticed a huge difference with the extra 200 watts in speed, hill climbing power, and just overall fun. I mentioned portability earlier, and Jackrabbit took a pretty unique approach to that. Like the original version of the bike, the XG can be carried around with an optional shoulder sling, but the handlebars can also be rotated 90 degrees to make the whole thing almost completely flat. This allows it to be stashed in pretty tight quarters, like a dorm room or a camper, without taking up a lot of space, and I think that makes it a bit more practical than even a lot of proper folding bikes. Another big highlight with the XG is the fact that it comes with dual 36 volt, 151 watt hour batteries that are removable and fully integrated into the top tube. The OG version includes just one battery, so in theory, this should double its range. And that's actually one of the things we tested, so stick around for our range test section a bit later in the review. Instead of pedals, there are folding foot pegs that have a really solid feel, and then the XG is specced with 20 inch by 2.4 inch CST tires. There's also a mechanical disc brake system with 160 millimeter rotors, and the one on our test bike was a mixed system with a front caliper from Bolids and a rear caliper from Power, both of which we're not all that familiar with. The faux leather saddle is made by Chifa, and the seat post includes a sort of plug-and-play tail light that flashes when the brake levers are squeezed. There's a tiny headlight up front as well with a similar plug that connects to a port in the frame. And then the XG comes with 620 millimeter low-rise handlebars with standard rubber grips. Aside from the brake levers, the right handlebar is where all the action happens. There's a simple and straightforward black and white display where you can turn the bike and the lights on and off or swap through the three different power levels. And then next to the display is a thumb operated throttle lever. Jackrabbit offers a pretty impressive number of accessories for the bike. I mentioned the shoulder sling, but there are also options for a cargo basket, a suspension seat post, a storage compartment, a cup holder, and even a lightweight cargo trailer that can hold up to 100 pounds. To wrap everything up though, the XG comes in a single frame size with four color options, including black, white, yellow, and this red. It weighs a total of 33 pounds with the batteries installed or 29 pounds without, and it is both UL2271 and UL2272 certified. That covers just about everything on the spec sheet, so let's dive into our test results and see how the XG performed. 
The Jackrabbit XG is a class two bike with throttle power up to 20 miles per hour. So we brought it up to its top speed when testing the brakes. We measured the distance it took the bike to stop after applying the brakes and repeated the process three times to get an average. That average was 28 feet, two inches, which is a good deal longer than we hope to see in this test. For context, the original version of the bike stopped in 29 feet, nine inches with a single rear brake, and the XG does have a bit of extra weight that makes it a little bit harder to bring to a stop. There's also a bit of a challenge when it comes to a bike with this short of a wheelbase. If the brakes are too good, then you've got a good chance of flipping over the handlebars. We were glad to see both front and rear brakes on the XG, and in general, these felt fine when I was testing the bike, but considering their slower performance, we still challenged Jackrabbit to find a more effective solution. Mechanical brakes often work just fine on bikes in this weight range, and the Tektro Aries system has always done really well for us, but there are plenty of other options out there as well. Maintenance would also likely be a bit easier if the bike used a more commonly found brake system. Let's take the Jackrabbit XG out on the bike paths for a speed test. There are three power levels for the throttle that I wanna check out, and then we can also see how quickly the bike can hit 20 miles per hour with the maximum amount of output. All right, we are here on the Jackrabbit XG to do a speed test. Uh, I'm stopped right now just because there are no pedals here. So uh, with the throttle in eco mode, I'm gonna sort of kick off and then hit the throttle. It will start up when you're in high mode from a dead stop, but for eco and mid, you gotta give it that little bit of a kick. But we have got a uh, fairly steady building acceleration here. Not too punchy, which is nice. It's very manageable and casual. And so we're going right around 15 and a half miles per hour. 15.6 was the max that I've seen. So let's go with that. I'll jump it up to mid mode. And not feeling a whole lot different, you know, a little bit more output from the motor here, but not a huge difference in feel. Getting a couple miles per hour over where we were though. So let's get around this bend, but it looks like we're around 18 and a half. 18.7 is the max that I've seen. Yep. All right, so let's go up to high mode. So this is a class two uh, e-scooter slash bike. And the max here is a little bit over 20 actually. 20.7, 20.8 is the max that I have seen. Nope, scratch that, 20.9. Okay, we will call that our speed test on the Jackrabbit XG. Let's go see how fast the throttle can reach 20 miles per hour. All right, so we are back on the Jackrabbit XG to do a throttle acceleration test. We'll see how fast the motor can get this bike up to 20 miles per hour when the throttle is in high mode. So we'll start in three, two, one, go. All right, so definitely faster, punchier acceleration in this mode. Picking up speed fast. And I'll just call it when we hit 20, right about now. So I think eco mode had a really good starting point with the max of 15.6 miles per hour. That's definitely enough speed to get you to your destination, but it's not so much that you feel like you're on a rocket. I actually really liked the gradual build in acceleration in that setting. The mid power level kicked things up to 18.7 miles per hour, but didn't really feel much different in terms of the strength of the output but that definitely changed in high mode where there was a lot more power and punch and I hit a max of 20.9 miles per hour in that setting. As you can see, I had to kick off with my feet to get things moving in eco mode and I had to do the same thing in mid if I was starting there. The bike takes off just fine from a stop in high mode and I'd definitely like to see that same ability extended to the other two settings. 
But otherwise, the data from our test shows a really great distribution of power. There are really consistent increases in speed between settings, so they're each pretty distinct, and that made it easy to find the right power level for the ride. I definitely didn't expect this much power from the XG when looking at it, and I think that really added to the overall fun factor. I've got to knock off a couple points for the startup issue, but overall, the XG still gets a solid A in this test. I was really curious to see if the XG's dual batteries would actually give it twice the range of the original version of the bike, and we did two separate range tests to find that out. We rode it in eco mode and high mode until it ran out of juice and tracked our mileage both times with Strava. The OG Jackrabbit had a single power level and one battery that gave us 9.5 miles over 45 minutes. The XG beat that in both of its tests. We covered 13.9 miles in 50 minutes using its high power setting, and then we smashed the old record in the low power eco mode with 19.5 miles over the course of an hour and a half. Both of those results exceeded our expectations, even if only by a slim margin, which means that the motor is pretty efficient. We anticipated that our high mode test would take about 36 minutes and give us about 12 miles with the 500 watt motor and the total battery capacity of 302 watt hours. In reality, we saw a 39% increase in time and a 14% increase in distance. When we tested the original version of the bike, we found its range fairly limiting. It was definitely enough to serve its intended purpose of getting across campus, but it wasn't that practical for anything outside of a pretty small radius. The dual batteries on the XG are definitely a game changer that really open up the possibilities. It can certainly still help you to get to class on time if you've got a massive campus, but now it can also be used as a commuter or errand runner, or a portable explorer that you can bring with you in a larger vehicle. As it is, I give the XG another solid A in this test, but just a couple days before we filmed this review, Jackrabbit released a 340 watt hour range buster battery that can be purchased separately for about $400. We didn't get the chance to test it, but the brand claims you can get an extra 14 miles for each of the standard batteries that you swap out for the range buster, and that's up to a total range of around 48 miles. That sounds pretty solid to me. We performed our standard hill test with the Jackrabbit at Hellhole Trail, which is a paved path that's a third of a mile long, and it has an average grade of 12%. The original version of the Jackrabbit didn't have the power to make it up the hill, but I'll pass you over to our test rider, Justin, so you can see what happened with the XG. All right, here at Hellhole with the Jackrabbit, and we're gonna see if this little guy, I guess I should call it big little guy since the bigger version, um, can get it up. I am on high power, and so far, Right down to about 8.2 miles an hour. I actually don't have a ton of expectations that this makes it up hell hole, but we'll, we'll, we'll find out here. So down to seven miles per hour, 6.2, 5.9, 5.8. Doing a little better than I expected. Um, yeah, it's not a big bike by any means. It's not like it's got a massively overpowered motor on it, um, but it is gonna make it up this first section of hell hole. Um, so far the motor, is pretty quiet I, in terms of like the frequency it's on the lower end of things i'll let you listen to it kind of as we hit this next section here this last deep section um, so you can hear for yourself Yeah, so as you can hear, it's not very loud, pretty quiet and stealth, and it's going to make it up, um, barring something unpredictable like it. It went down to about 5.2 miles per hour there on that section, um, and that's it. So overall, it's going to make it. I don't. It's not going to be like the hill champion by any means, um, but if it were, I'd probably be saying don't buy this thing. <laughs> so feels pretty good power given what it is. And I'm curious to see the overall score on it. Yeah, coasting right right now around 12 miles per hour. Probably finish right around 12 to 13. 
and we'll go to the tape and see how it did. Justin's done enough of these tests that he's got a pretty good feel for things, and he was totally right in saying that the XG wasn't the fastest, but also that's probably a good thing. He made it to the finish line in two minutes and three seconds with an average speed of 8.8 .8 miles per hour. Obviously, that's leaps and bounds beyond the original Jackrabbit, and in comparison to full-size e-bikes with 500 watt rear hub motors, it landed a little below average. There are a couple of big contributing factors to that. First, the XG's motor and battery are both 36 volt instead of the 48 volt systems that we often see at the 500 watt mark. Lower voltage means that power moves slower from the battery to the motor, so the motor has less energy to use at any given time. Second, the motor produces a peak of 590 watts and 35 newton meters of torque, which is clearly enough to do the job, but also on the lower end of the spectrum. With that in mind, the XG's results make perfect sense, and we've got to give it some serious credit for finishing this test. This is another area where the XG's upgrades really made a big difference, and once again, made this version of the bike a lot more practical. We've gone through all of our formal testing, but now I want to bring things back to a more personal level. Let's take one more spin and talk about the main things that influence the ride quality of the XG, and we'll wrap things up back here in a jiffy. All right, we are back again one last time on the Jackrabbit XG to show you what it's like to ride. So again, this is uh, more of an e-scooter than an e-bike, even though it looks like a bike but uh, has a mostly upright riding position here. I've got a little tiny bit of a forward lean going on, but that's primarily just because of the size of the thing. Uh, but it is available in a single frame size that fits riders from four foot nine up to six foot six, actually. Pretty impressive range of accommodation there. And that is mostly because of the seven inches of adjustability in your saddle height with the seat post length. Uh, but then also you can adjust your reach and your handlebar height a tiny bit uh, by rotating, uh, loosening up the standard stem here and rotating the angle of the handlebars. Uh, there is a second uh, joint here in the stem and that is actually just for the sideways rotation of the handlebars for when you are folding the bike flat. Uh, but there is no outward adjustment there. There is a rigid fork here, so no suspension, but you get a pretty decent amount of cushion from the tires. Those are 20 inch by 2.4 inch CST off-road tires. Uh, they're not too huge and chunky, but they have I'd say kind of a low profile off-road tread and that gives you a little bit of flexibility in where you can take this bike and uh, again better stability and, and some cushion as well. So the last thing we'll talk about is the motor that is a 500 watt rear hub that's pretty zippy uh, especially because of the size and weight of this bike. There's no pedal uh, assist because there are no pedals, but you do have the throttle with three levels of power and uh, that functions, you know, generally as you would expect for a thumb operated throttle. Uh, a couple different acceleration levels and speed limits, so you have some control over how fast you're going. But in any case, let's call it there and head back to the studio so we can wrap up our discussion on the Jackrabbit XG. I've talked quite a bit about the fun factor here, but that really is something that I have to reiterate again because it's not an obvious thing that I can just point to on the bike. This thing is super zippy and very maneuverable, and full-size e-bikes just have a completely different feel. We were fairly skeptical of the advertised height range, but we had our shortest and tallest testers in the office try it out and they said the fit was great. Kaylee is five foot four and Michael is six foot five. So we were pretty close to both ends of the spectrum. And I think verification on the taller side is a bit more useful considering how small this bike is. There's definitely a different type of fit here since riders don't have to worry about getting proper leg extension when pedaling. I found the bike to be really comfortable though. And that was mainly because of the really nice faux leather saddle. I also found the bike really easy to use. There's no need to shift, and when you're selecting between the different power levels, I liked how the system steps up and down instead of cycling through the three settings. 
Bottom line, the ride quality is great, and I think the XG earned itself an A+. I think the Jackrabbit XG can take some thought to wrap your head around just because it's so unique. I think that effort is really worthwhile though, just because of how much fun and potential this bike has. Sure, it's a niche bike that's made even more niche with a price tag currently between $1,500 and $2,000, but I think it's clear that this version of the bike is way more versatile than the OG version, and it can do a lot more than you might guess just by looking at it. The upgraded motor and the extra battery gave the XG a real edge in our speed, range, and hill tests, and the changes Jackrabbit made to the frame fixed one of our minor complaints about the original version without really affecting the bike's handling. This version of the bike is a little bigger and heavier, but we think those are worthy trade-offs. There are still a couple of areas with room for improvement, with the brakes at the top of the list, the brake system that comes on the bike is far from terrible, but we think its performance warrants an upgrade to a name brand system. We also hope Jackrabbit gives riders the ability to get moving from a complete stop in eco and mid power levels, but that part's a pretty minor thing in the grand scheme. Overall, we were really impressed by the XG and we definitely think it has a place for you if you want a super fun and portable bike that doesn't require any pedaling. If you're interested in this bike, then I can confidently say you will not be disappointed, and I encourage you to check out our link to Jackrabbit's website down in the video description. Please use that link to help support us if you found this review helpful. It won't cost you anything extra, but it lets us know you value our in-depth reviews. And if you want even more detail, check out the link to our written review. And if you have any questions, you can drop us a line down in the comments section here or at electricbikereport.com. Thanks for taking a ride with me today. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time. Again, I'm John with Electric Bike Report, and this is the Jackrabbit XG.